Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Hauza billahi min shaitani. Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim. Yeah, the energy teachings we have on the power of the sunnah. I think there's a couple of videos on the reality of the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad and that we are like a pyramid. That uh, all the energy that we're building with the sunnah is a protection. Every type of practice that we're doing is to achieve and to bring that energy within us, insulate the energy that being produced, not to lose it. So one reality is building our energy. Next problem is how quickly are we going to lose our energy. Nighttime is a time of great difficulty. Nighttime is a time of great attacks because insan is lowered his defense, he's lying in bed and every type of difficulty is trying to come to them. So there's a whole sunnah of how Sayyidina Muhammad has described for us to sleep. Means to keep yourself covered, never sleep uncovered. Keep yourself in wudu that pray and go wash for your wudu, pray your two rakahs Salatul Wudu and then sleep. When you're lying in your bed recite four Surat Al-Falaq, three Surat Al-Nas, two Surat Al-Ikhlas while blowing upon yourself for protection and lie on to your sleep. Sleep on your back and sleep on your right side. That is your protection, again common sense because my heart is exposed and guarding me. So when I sleep on the right my heart is guarding me. When I sleep on my heart I'm creating a stress upon my heart which is my energy protection and because I'm sleeping on it it's not energizing as a shield around me so I come under attack if I sleep on the left. If I sleep on the right I have a shield of protection and definitely don't sleep on your stomach because then you're completely exposed. Your shield of protection is then suffocated because you're sleeping on the heart, it's bad for your stomach, it's bad for your physiology, it's bad for your heart and your rear end is exposed to every type of devil and demon above you. Then with this energy Prophet recommended that you sleep covered. If you know that much attack is happening at night time keep your head covered when you sleep. They have now either the sock that people can put on, the mask that we made is multi-use. You can pull it back for like a sock over the head and you pull it a little bit over for the eyes. But either way put something upon your head so that the head is covered as a protection. And Mawlana Shaykh would recommend that a little cup of salt by the bed, a siwak and as soon as you wake up you put the salt in the mouth for because we are not understanding that when we lie in bed the, the unseen world is ten times more populated than our world. If you think there are bugs in the physical world, the unseen world is ten times more. And all those creatures they're free to roam everywhere. So they're all over and sun. So as soon as you put salt you're cleaning away every type of negative energy and waking up with a positive energy and the first breath you're going to breathe, even a cup of water that you're going to drink, the salt should purify that reality, inshaAllah. And if you have to wash for wudu then again you make your Salatul Wudu and go back to bed after you made your Salatul Wudu. Those whom are not praying on time try to wash often, try to do your practices, wash often, try to drink lots of water before you sleep so that the sleep is light. Doesn't need to be a super deep sleep. Keep your sleep to be light, wash often so that to tarbiyah and train yourself. And punish yourself, learn to punish yourself. Old awliyaullah would inflict a punishment that was great and difficult against themselves. Since we have a lower threshold of that understanding is that if you did something wrong make a penalty and adhere to that penalty. I'm going to donate every time I miss my fajr, every time I do this wrong, miss this, speak a bad way, speak… make there to be a, a, a re repercussion, 
What's the word? Make there to be a consequence. Just say, sorry, astaghfirullah. That's not going to help anything. There has to be a, a consequence of every bad action. So make a donation, make an action, say, I'm going to go now to the food bank and do this or make something that will motivate you not to do that. Like when we said that if we anger and talk bad to people, immediately go and ask their apologies. The embarrassment of asking people, I'm sorry I was belligerent again and, and was wrong. That process of continuously asking and seeking people's forgiveness is humiliating for the nafs and it begins to inspire you, look don't do this because I'm not going to say another sorry. And it will begin to help you to stop passing that limit. But if there's no repercussion, there's no punishment, the, what the servant will stop at anything. So make your own laws and punishments, that way to discipline the self and control the self, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, is there any wazaif to control anger and frustration if it happens at a snap of a moment? The zikrs, uh, ya halim, the keeping of wudu, keeping the salawats, all of the practices, the muraqaba, the meditation. And then we have a form letter just on the on asking about energy because the, the, the base and foundation of these practices is a strong adherence to what we understood of energy. So we don't always have to repeat the same thing. You have to make wudu, you have to make salat al wudu, you have to do your zikr, you have to do your salawats, you have to do the muraqabah, you have to understand the basics of how to keep your energy practices. If you're not doing any of that, nothing is going to make any sense. So when you keep the foundation strong that I'm doing all of these, I'm doing all my salawats, I keep my wudu, I keep my energy practices, I'm meditating and asking how to connect to you, then I'm praying Salatul Najat that take away my qadab and my anger Ya Rabbi. I have an anger that I can't control then Salatul Najat, you open the app Fajr and go to Salatul Najat, click on it and say, Ya Rabbi I'm going to specifically pray every night to Hajjul Salatul Najat to take away my qadab. And then that sujood is a long sujood, say, Ya Rabbi I'm asking for forgiveness, Tawbata abdin zalimin li nafsi yamika nafsi mawtan hayatan wa nashura. We have a whole dua there where it was the Sultan al Tawbah, Sultan al Istighfar, that asking in that sujood and that sajda that, Ya Rabbi I'm asking please. Grant me a forgiveness, grant me the ability of this anger to be taken and, and, and take away my bad characteristics inshaAllah. How to stop bad habits that are old and die hard? Alhamdulillah that keeps the shaykh in business. If people didn't have sins who would need a shaykh? Yeah. It's like saying if the world was cured of all sicknesses there would be no need for a doctor. So it means that the the, the fellowship that Allah is creating is He knows what sins the servants are doing and as a result He wants to build the relationship that this character you have go to this one to teach you to stop from that because this one's training was to deal with that. So it's a relationship, what is it called, symbiotic relationship? It's a relationship that needs each other. The shaykh needs students that sin and sinful people need a shaykh. And that's why we said that the tariqah, zikr is a washing machine. It's not the circle of salihin, although everyone wants to think they're the circle of salihin. The reality is that everybody if left to their own will do bad things. So Allah gathers them and says at least cleanse and purify yourself because He loves you, that He's guiding you to clean now before the cleaning of the grave which is 70,000 times more difficult. Wash now, clean now, take away the sins now, build the character now. That's why we say it's a ni'mat, Mawlana Shaykh describes it's a ni'mat from Allah because when Allah doesn't give that ni'mat there's a difficulty coming in the grave. Those whom He granted them a special gift sit with the circle of paradise, they're going to wash and clean all of this badness now. So no the shaykh is in need of the students 
and whatever badness they're doing, they're doing. And that's, you know, whatever been written upon that student. But to change the bad character then is the goal, how to change and how to discipline and how to teach the student to discipline themselves from the bad characteristics inshaAllah. But nobody's perfect. Do we have permission to, to do the Fajr awrad and what can we recite for barakah? Yeah, I don't know if you've opened the app yet, that Fajr awrad is a good hour for you. So if you can complete that with all of the Fajr namaz, there's 20 rakahs in the fajr. There's tahajjud, you can go 8, 10 rakahs of tahajjud, salatul najjah, salatul shukr, salatul tasbih, you'll be there for a couple hours. And then the surahs to recite after that. Just first let's go slowly, slowly. If you start to see the gargoyles and all the demons and all the difficult things and you start to scream then you're going to complain. So again everything in life is just slowly, 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 slowly. Anything you do too much of and you're not built up for that level and that understanding and you open up you know a parda, you open up a veil that you're not prepared to be open, you're going to have problems. So we've talked on those issues before that you want to do too much and say too many things and then you're going to have problems with what's opening. So try to just do the awrad from the book, this is the wazifa from the shaykhs. And that's from Grand Shaykh Shaykh Dagestani, Shaykh Mahan, Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani to all the living shaykhs right now. That's the Naqshbandi and that's the authorized wazifa. So do that, alhamdulillah, that should be enough. And the muraqabah is most important. The muraqabah, your connection, all your practices. In other talks we've given, it's not your zikrs that are opening anything. If you think that you do 100,000 and you're going to open something like reach into the heavens, it's actually your good manner, good characteristics and your level of muraqabah that the shaykh is flying like a rocket throughout the heavens. And the minute your good character and your muraqabah can connect, you can feel how quickly they're lifting the student. That's what's important. Not that I'm relying upon myself that I'm going to do all these practices, I'm going to exaggerate the count of these practices, then it's not about lifting myself up. It's about the good characteristics and mastering the understanding of muraqabah, what we talked about at the beginning of the discussion. Your path is about two inches long, can you follow that? And then from this A to B you don't have to add anything. Somebody comes, I want to add this, I want to add, okay but you're diverting from the cause, just get to the A and the B. If you were able to match the guidance that comes to you, you get an award. That's B to C then. Okay, now you're ready. From B to C is a little bit more bumpier. <laughs> you're good? Let's do it. Let's do some zikr shaykh inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa al Basir Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.